Welcome to Audio Branding, the hidden gem of marketing. Sound plays a more important role in human behavior and our decision-making than you may realize. In this podcast, I'll help you understand the art and science of sound so you can better influence others in business and your life. I'm your host, Jody Krangle. Let's delve a little deeper. Hey, Mark. Thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Glad to be here. Yeah, um, I'm looking forward to talking to you about this. Uh, your your perspective is a little unique here for what we talk about here usually. Uh, so I like to start us off and, and I don't want to get you to introduce yourself because I've done all that beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll talk about it though. I will yeah. get into your background on all this. But I want to ask you to begin with if you can tell me a story about how sound moved you. Uh, like in your early childhood maybe. Yeah, absolutely. So for me, you know, if I was to think of something that would really take me back to my childhood and what I remember, you know, as a young kid was constantly playing basketball you know, which is like something you do. I grew up outside of Chicago. That was something we did. I did it as young as I can remember all through high school. And just the sound of the basketball hitting the ground, you know, I would spend hours, you know, by myself with friends. And, you know, whenever I hear that sound, when I take my kids to the park, it just kind of takes me back to that time. And uh, it's just been, you know, a very impactful part of my life when I was growing up. Uh, being an athlete and uh, playing basketball. And that sound is just very echoes in my mind. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah. I was going to ask you what it makes you feel when you hear it now, but you, you kind of answered that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, sounds take us back a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, is there a particular, I'm just curious, and, and maybe you don't have anything in particular, but is there a song that you hear on the radio that just automatically takes you back to a certain period of time in your life? <laughs> yeah, you know, what's funny is like whenever I hear like a random boys to men, uh, song <laughs> okay. that yeah. is it or like I remember PM Dawn uh, uh -huh. at, you know they were kind of not as a big as a band but I remember having the cassette player listening to those cassettes okay. driving in my parents minivan going on you know a family vacation so yeah. like whenever I hear those songs it's like super nostalgic of like oh my gosh I remember that I remember we were at what we we're doing you know and it's uh it's very fun the music just is incredible having that impact you know, very I'm, much so. Yeah. Yeah. It just makes us relive the moment, which mm -hmm. I think is fantastic. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm a kid of the 80s. That's when yeah. I grew up. So <laughs> yeah. so all of those songs like, yeah. oh, my God, uh, mm -hmm. you know, shout. <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> that takes me back immediately. Yeah. And you know, what's so funny is I haven't heard the song in like 30 years. But yeah. like if you start to hear a couple lyrics, it's like you could pretty much finish singing it. Yeah. And, you know, I've talked to my brother and sister about this and they say the same thing. It's like you can just finish the lyrics because you just listen we listen to it so much and it was yeah. such a big part of the culture and just like you said it just kind of takes you back to that moment uh it's funny yeah yeah and uh, it's funny because i'm starting to hear these things as muzak now mm, <laughs> like, yeah that's, that's just freaking me out a little <laughs> yeah right yeah. yeah i don't i i don't know now yeah. I'm, I'm starting to really feel old <laughs> but yeah yeah it just automatically makes you re relive those moments of childhood yeah. which I, I i love it's yeah. it's fun yeah. but how did you get into video production now like what's your your background in that and you know how much of that is sound related yeah, absolutely. So I got involved in video uh, pro a little over 10 years ago, mm -hmm. and I worked in a, with a marketing in the marketing department for a manufacturing company in sporting goods. And I did everything across the board with marketing. And video is really what I felt uh, I had the most interest in, the most passion with. And I also felt that's where kind of the direction was going. So over the course of um, learning all the different things on marketing, I took my marketing knowledge and combined that with the creativity and passion that I have for, you know, kind of artistic related content and, you know, kind of built a company uh, from that point, you know, moving forward. Music and sound uh, and sound design has had a pivotal part in storytelling you know, not only when I was creating videos, but now a big component of 
uh, what my team does, you know, day in and day out. Yeah. Yeah. It's good to know that that's a part of the consideration. <laughs> yeah. It's a huge uh, part. Yeah. Yeah. Usually yeah, clients that's... like don't really understand the importance of it until they see a video and contrast it to something without those elements. Um, and what a big difference it can make in the overall viewing experience. Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So when you're filming, how do you get the best sound? Yeah. So when we're filming, we look at ambient sounds or specific sound design based on the environment. So environmental sounds. Um, so that's one component. And, and that's something like if you just watch movies, that's the big difference of like a high quality movie compared to something that's maybe B rated or a little bit lower quality amateurish. Um, are all those little, you know, texture sounds, you know, a lot of times they call them Foley where they're done in a studio and then applied to the actual film. So we'll do that when we're on set. Uh, and then also a big part of what we do is we do documentary style filmmaking specifically for like businesses and brands that are trying to tell their story about who they are, what makes them different. So the narrative sound of the interview is very important. So you know, between having the right equipment, you know, asking the right questions, and then kind of incorporating some specific techniques to get the best sound, both on the production side and the post-production side, to give it that high-quality feel so that the customer watching or prospect watching the video equates the quality of the video with the quality of the product or service they're going to get. Yes. I think a lot of people don't really realize how much that plays into mm -hmm. it. That yeah. it's and it's one of those things that they don't really understand or hear until it's bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, why do you think audio is like the last thing that people think about in these videos? I mean, the visuals, of course, mm -hmm. I mean, they're in front of your eyes. You're seeing them. They're obvious. But why don't people pay attention to the sound as much? I think a lot of times they take it for granted. And I think mm -hmm. a part of that is because you know, 75% of people like on Facebook will not listen to sound. So they don't really equate it as much or they don't understand the value of it. However, uh, sound is very like, people are very unforgiving when it comes to sound. So people take in 50% of, of the experience through sound. And that's a combination of like music, narration, sound design elements. And if you can't hear what the person's saying when you're watching it, people will turn it off right away. But now with visuals, it's kind of reversed now because with visuals, people will be more forgiving if the quality of the visuals are not great and they'll watch the video if they can listen to it. But if they can't listen to it, it forget it. It's 100% junk. Yeah. You mentioned yeah. the 75% of people who aren't listening to the sound on mm -hmm. places like Facebook. So in that case, how do you get them to click on things in order to actually listen? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So really what we have to do is caption everything, particularly when it's on social media, is you have to caption it. So the goal of us as video marketers is to you know, kind of stop the scroll, interrupt them with something engaging about the business that's solving a person's problem that's in the target market. So we have compelling visuals with captions and the narrations there if they so choose to watch or listen to it. But the goal is to kind of take them from that short form video to a longer form video that kind of tells a little bit more about the story, the problem that they're solving and doing that with visuals, story, sound, music to get them um, to ultimately convert. Yeah, it's yeah. a good point. And yeah. you had mentioned that you do longer videos, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, how do you get people to pay attention to those when everyone's being told they should do shorts? Yeah. <laughs> because that's, I mean, you know, less than a minute, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The 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 recommended length from Facebook uh, is 15 seconds. Um, so here's kind of the way that it works. And, and we, we kind of call them long form videos now but they're relatively two, two to three minutes is considered long form now. So a lot of it depends on how you're marketing and based on the interest of someone when they're purchasing. So for instance, if they're on social media, they're being interrupted. So you have to be very quick and precise with your message. That's why these short 15 second videos perform really well. And then if they're engaged and you've piqued their interest, then you can send them to a longer form video because at that point they've shown interest 
and they're willing to spend a little bit more time. And and we usually will try to get the video between a minute and 30 to two minutes to give them the information they need. What's the problem you're solving? What is my life going to look like? Um, I'm you know, reluctant to purchase. What are other people saying about it? And that's kind of the story that we typically would tell when we're you know, creating promo videos for clients. So a short form video that leads her to, you know, a longer 90 second to two minute video. Okay. Makes yeah. sense. Definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, why do you think that businesses should uh, actually do that? I mean, <laughs> what yeah. what's their benefit? <laughs> yeah. Well, with any business, you know, people will typically work with people or, or buy products and services based on who they know, like, and trust. Mm -hmm. And video just helps increase the speed of trust. Um, and that's what you're trying to do through a combination of, you know, different elements that all come together to tell that story um, about the business, how they're going to solve the problem, what experiences other people have had um, and doing that in a passive way for the viewer where they don't have to work really hard. So a viewer doesn't have to work hard by that's reading paragraphs big. and paragraphs. You, know, you yeah. can just passively sit back, watch a 90 second video. You can see it. It's visually as compelling with live action footage or animation that reinforces it. It's being narrated. You know, if it's done well, you have good music, good sound design, and it's, you know, captivating for the person. And it's all relative to how big of the pain or the problem is for the viewer. And the, all those elements kind of come together um, and distills a lot of information down in contrast to like a single image or, you know, paragraphs and paragraphs of text. Yeah. 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 You're mentioning the no like trust factor. And, mm -hmm. and I totally get that. And I hear that a lot from people who are marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I, you know, I'm pretty much a proponent of it myself. Yeah. But do you think it's possible to get people to do that without sound? Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I I think it's very, very difficult. I mean, mm -hmm. we've so, done some that are, you know, visual storytelling. So you're you're showing it visually, but the sound is kind of the unspoken narration. So the mm -hmm. music and the sound design play a huge role. So we did this one campaign recently for uh, a company that works exclusively with the deaf. And um, it was actually a really compelling story. It's totally visual. It was to show their product where if someone was injured, if they basically um, had a call 911 and you're deaf, you need to be able to have, you know, kind of, uh, you know, almost like a video chat communicating with an interpreter that relays that message to the EMT services, Super to E911. Important. Yeah. So the, the whole video had no narration, but the music was really important in setting the tone and the feeling and then the sound design of the different textures. So it basically was a scene where she was running, got hurt and, you know, completely frightened all by herself. And basically the service was there to kind of like get EMT uh, to her promptly. So I think if we just put mute on it, uh, there wouldn't be any captions because there was no talking sure. and it completely is harder to see. It's harder to get that full experience um, without having music uh, be a be a component of it, particularly for the hearing audience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's geared the the actual product was geared towards people who couldn't hear, but the people who could mm -hmm. needed to know that for the people yeah. they're trying to help that didn't. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, it's yeah. kind of a <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. tricky. It's yeah. tricky. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Exactly. So it was a it was a delicate balance of like mm -hmm. using sound as a additional element of telling the story, but have mm -hmm. it being visually compelling where, um, you know, for for a for a deaf audience, they could understand the dynamic of the situation mm -hmm. and see the relevancy of the product and how beneficial that would be in an emergency situation for them. Yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So people making videos are, I mean, clearly not everyone knows how to do it well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's a combination of a lot of things. But what do you think are the major mistakes that people are making when they make, when they put these videos together? Yeah. I think uh, some of the mistakes that people do is they rely on one video trying to do everything. 
um, when typically you need a series of videos to kind of increase that speed of trust like we talked about earlier. So it's not only having the social video on the front end, but it's testing different um, different angles on like really what's connecting with your audience. And then it's having a video like on that main page that talks about the core offer. And, and let's say you're booking a call, right? So then you want a video that explains what the call is about. And then a thank you video after the call saying, this is what we're going to be doing. So, and then videos proceeding up to the call that essentially tell them a little bit more about you, tell them what you're solving, providing some value pre leading up to the call. So what that does is it just increasing the speed of trust. So by the time they get to that call with you, they already kind of have got closer to that trust because you've provided value. They can see you, they can connect with you, they hear you. Uh, and it's just really powerful tool. And that's what I see a lot of people doing is they just think one video is going to solve all their problems. And yeah. in some instances, it can be super, super helpful. It's one is better than none. Mm -hmm. um, but really expanding your video uh, experience through the buyer's journey is super helpful. And I'm a big component of documentary filmmaking. So it's just like depending on the brand, you know, um, it's really good to just have that one to one narration directly connecting with the prospect. Yeah. yeah. I'm curious about whether or not any of the clients that you do this for have an actual audio brand. Like, mm -hmm. do they have a sonic logo? Do they have particular music that they use? Do they have a voiceover person that they use on a regular basis? Are they consistent with any of this is what I'm curious about. Yes. Yeah, some, some of the clients we work with, particularly the brands, it's like using a voiceover talent is really good. I because, you know, if you have turnover or you have um, a larger company and you don't want to showcase particular individuals, the voiceover option is what we always recommend. And then typically do they for have consistent voiceover is what I'm asking, though. I'm I, like, do they have one person or mm -hmm. a type of voice that they use? So uh, what I'm more asking is, is, are they consistent with the sound that they're using? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So we, yeah. whenever we work with this type of client, we'll typically do a series of videos and we always say you, whatever we've selected for the voice talent that accurately represents the tone, emotion, feeling, and demographic we want, you got to stick with that one all the way through because it creates almost like, um, you know, a brand persona for the company. You know, a lot of times you'll hear, um, like auto companies do this a lot. They'll use a, a, a campaign and use the same voice throughout because it creates that feeling and emotion they want to invoke. Is it a male voice that's really gritty? Is it a female's voice that's really soft and trusting? You know, whatever the campaign's objective for the emotion that you want to feel, that uh, narrator is as, as important, if not more important, than the tonality of the music that you use. It's really all those pieces together. Yeah, it's yeah. tricky to get people to acknowledge that that's something they should be paying attention to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah, the, the sound overall, and I think a lot of these companies could do with things like a sonic logo at the end of these videos, or mm -hmm. even at the beginning. I mean, it, it it depends on what they're trying to achieve, obviously, and you yeah. know, I'm sure you deal with that on a daily basis. But yeah. the consistent repetition is what's really going to make these things memorable. And yeah. I, I think that a lot of people don't really get that, that they don't understand how psychology works, mm -hmm. yeah. how our brains work to remember these things. And if you don't remember, it's not going to be yeah. good for your business. <laughs> yeah, I think another mistake that uh, companies typically make, usually smaller businesses, is mm -hmm. the importance of consistency in branding yes. um, because they'll get tired of it and they'll just want to change it. But like to new prospects, they're seeing it for the first time. So I mentioned earlier, I used to work for a sporting goods manufacturer. Their name was Shut Sports. And they, when I was there, they were going through a huge rebrand with the logo, the imagery and all that, and everything that goes along with rebranding. And one of the things that we did was we hired an agency and the agency worked with a voice talent to do the logo at the end, the sound. So it would say, Shut Sports. And, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> and it was, you know, and that was a part of the branding. So every video we did, every mm -hmm. piece of content we did had that tag at the end. 
And it was interesting for me because you know I was in my 20s at the time and I never had exposure to voice talent or an agency. And I remember being on the phone <laughs> and the voice talent was there with the agency and he was he would he would say that tag like 15 different ways and i was and then my the ad manager was like you know my marketing manager was like okay i like the third one but pull it back just a touch and i, th- I don't the think the nuances of that one phrase yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, i yeah. <laughs> i think people don't understand the uh the 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 actual talent and skill that goes into changing the inflection of your voice uh, when it comes to voice talent and like what goes behind actually before you actually see it, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Before you actually, he- before you actually hear it. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's incredible. Yeah. yeah for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I love that they were actually doing that though, yeah. that early on. I think that's mm-hmm. a great idea. Yeah. I also have heard a little bit of, um, I guess, data that's said that if the company name is repeated in the mm-hmm. Sonic logo, that it's mm-hmm. actually a little more effective. Yeah. Memorable, right? That makes it more memorable. I think yeah. that's why a lot of insurance companies, for instance, repeat their name five times. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like that's yeah. that's what's got to be done. Mm-hmm. But uh, but yeah, it's really it's an interesting aspect of all of this that. Yeah. Yeah, that I that I really appreciate and and am glad that you can appreciate yeah. too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, that's the end of this episode. Thanks for listening. And if you like what you heard, why not tell a friend about this podcast? It's available in all the usual locations. Until next time, 